Hello, everybody. Welcome to 7.4. Today, we're going to talk about simulations. Our learning target is I can use simulations to find experimental probabilities. And we're going to start off by defining what a simulation is. I'm sure you've maybe heard of the word simulation before, um, but uh, our book defines it as um, an experiment that is designed to reproduce the conditions of a situation or a process. Simulations allow you to study situations that are impractical to create in real life. So um, something that's not easy to do in real life, but you want to still kind of understand the probability or the uh, likelihood that something will happen. Um, and so you want to design a simulation or kind of like a test run uh, to see what the probabilities are. Here's an example. Um, for example, uh, if you are going to have your dogs have puppies, right? A dog has three puppies. The gender of each puppy is equally likely. Right? We know that it's either male or female. It's a 50-50 shot when you're having pups. Letter A says design a simulation involving 20 trials that you can use to model the genders of the puppies. Okay, and these, e these outcomes are equally likely. Letter B says, use your simulation to find the experimental probability that all three puppies are male. Okay, so we're, we need to kind of design something here that's gonna allow us to, to find the probability that all three puppies are males. Yeah. So for letter A, um, we need to be thinking about when we design our simulation, what, what's a type of experiment that we could do that has two equally likely outcomes? So uh, I'm going to write that down, and, and that's all it's asking for letter A is, is kind of for us to design that or explain how we do that. So uh, choose an experiment. that has two equally likely outcomes uh, for each event. Like, um, in this case, we're talking about uh, gender. And um, one example might be uh, flipping coin. Okay, that's what that's what I'm going to use. So let's say let um, H for heads um, stand for males and let T or tails stand for females. Okay. And <clears throat> um, so this is kind of how I'm going to design my simulation so that I can kind of test to see what this experimental probability would be. Okay, letter B says, use your simulation to find the experimental probability that all puppies, all three are males. So um, here they, what the book did is they, um, they performed 20 different trials. So they flipped uh, three coins for the three puppies and they did that 20 different times. So the table down here shows the results and it says find the number of outcomes that represents three males or in other words, H, H, H. So you can see the first spin, the first trial was heads, tails, heads. So we had one female and two males. Uh, the second one was all three females and so on and so forth, right? We're looking for the number of outcomes that represent three males or three H's. In this case, it was uh, two trials out of the total of 20. Right? So that's the same if we simplify it as one tenth or 10%. Uh, okay? And that's what the it asked for um, the experimental probability. And looking at our experiment, it was 1 out of 10 or 2 out of 20 or 10%. Okay. So sometimes they'll 
you know, problems like these will already have tables and trials set up for you. Sometimes you need to create them. Like in our try it here, it says you randomly guess the answers to four true false questions. <clears throat> a wants you to design a simulation that you can use to model the answers. So um, again, kind of like up here where we said, well, there's two weekly likely outcomes. So we just did flipping a coin. Um, we said H is for males, T is for females. So we could say the same down here. We could say, you know, H is for uh, when you get it correct on a guess or um, T is for when you get it wrong on a guess for the, the true false questions, right? There's, it's either right or wrong, it's two examples. So you kind of say something similar for letter A as we did up here. And then it says, use your simulation to find the experimental probability that you answer all four questions correctly. Okay, so um, I'm gonna just start off by saying everybody should probably have different results, right? This is random. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had to sneeze. And, you know, when you're conducting an experiment, you're going to get lots of different results. Um, and, and it's random here. So, um, you know, some people might be thinking, okay, so do I have to go and flip coins this many number of times? Well, let me give you a little bit of a um, uh, helpful hint here that um, you can go to the Google and you can type in a random number generator and there's this great site um, called random.org. I'm going to go to that site and um, on this site there is a lot of different um, randomness things that you can do and it'll just calculate it for you so you don't have to go through that experiment. So for example one of the free things that they do is a coin flipper. So I'm going to click on the the coin flipper and you can pick all sorts of different like currencies and whatnot um, here so you can do Swiss or Chinese or whatever I don't I'm just gonna do a US let's call it 25 cents let's just pick the Connecticut quarter and um, let's say I'm going to flip it uh, four times because I think I have four questions on my true false and I click on flip coin and it will, instead of me having to flip a coin four times, it'll automatically do it. So you can see on my first flip, I got one head and three tails. So if I were to make a table similar to like the, the first example, and I were to do like 20 different trials, right, I could set up my table <clears throat> like so. I'm, I'm not counting here. I might have more than 20 or less than, let's say, three by one, two, three, four, five, six. I got 18. But <clears throat> so my first spin, I got uh, heads and three tails, I think. So if I go back, yeah. So I think I counted, I said H is going to be correct answers and tails is going to be incorrect. So here I got only one correct and three wrong. Let's flip them again. Again, it's, it's just random and it does it automatically for you. So again, oh, I wonder what the probability of that is that I get the same exact thing. Okay, so I'd, I'd mark down one heads and, and three tails. Okay, now I'd mark down four tails. I'll flip again. Now I'll mark down two heads and, and two tails, right? So that's what I'm putting in here. The second spin was the exact same. The next spin was all four tails. The next was two heads and two tails, right? And <clears throat> I'm writing this down and then eventually I'm finding the experimental probability. So I'm looking for where I have four heads because I, heads were correct answers and I randomly guessed the answers to four true or false questions. <clears throat> and I'm looking for when all four are correct. So, um, you know, everybody's going to have a different experimental probability because everyone is going to have different um, outcomes of their experiment. Now, we could find the theoretical probability to see um, theoretically how, 
what you should probably be getting close to if you did enough trials. Well, what's the odds of getting it right on the first guess? Well, theoretically, you have a 50% chance, one in two chance. Um, that's the first question, but we have four questions. So we need to multiply that by <clears throat> the probability of each question. Right, so I have a 50% chance on all four questions. So one times one times one times one is one, two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So the theoretical probability of getting all four correct is 1 16th. If you divide that, that's like 6.25%. Uh, so in the end, your experimental probability should be close to that theoretical if you did enough trials. Okay, but that's, that's kind of the process that you would go through if you needed to design your own simulation and come up with your own experimental probability. Let me know if you have more questions on that. Let's check out another situation. In example two, we're talking about uh, simulating outcomes that are not equally likely. Okay, I'm going to highlight that because that's, that's important here. You have a 60% chance of winning a board game and a 20% chance of winning a card game. Design and use a simulation involving 50 randomly generated numbers. Okay, once again, you could use this, you know, um, to this random number, uh, random generator to, to go through that process, but they already did it here for you to estimate the probability of winning both games. All right, so when we do that here, um, this says the digits one through six and one through two are chosen because they have a 60% chance and a 20% chance of being randomly generated for each digit. Okay, so use a simulation with randomly generated numbers from zero to 99. And you can see here, if you had a graphing calculator, you could do that. But otherwise, you could just use random.org and you could put these in for your um, random numbers. And we're using one through six because um, one through six in your first number would give you a 60% chance. And the same with one and two in the, the ones place and the one through six in the tens place. Okay. So it says use the random number generator on a graphing calculator. Again, we're not going to do that. You can use just random.org to generate the numbers. The table shows the results. Find the number of outcomes that represent winning both games. Okay. So we are looking for where uh, the numbers one through six are in the tens place and one and two are in the ones. Okay, so you can see that they've circled them here. This is the tens place. So we have a one through a six, we have a five, and this is a one or a two, <clears throat> that's two, right, in the ones place. So you can see they went through and they circled. Uh, this is one through six, and this is one through two. This is one through six, and this is one through two. You can kind of get the idea there of how they circled those numbers one through six representing the 60% chance in the tens place, and one and two representing the 20% chance in the ones place. Okay, so what did they find? Um, well, how many numbers met the criteria? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers met the criteria out of a total of 50. So seven out of 50, which is equal to uh, let's see if I made it into 100 times by 2 times by 2. 14 out of 100, which is 14%. So um, that's when you have a situation, two different outcomes. You know, one is one outcome is 60% chance. The other is 20% chance. They're not equally likely. That's kind of how you set up a simulation like that. And then uh, the last situation is kind of similar to that here setting up a real life um, modeling problem where it says each school year there's a 40 percent chance that weather causes one or more days of school to be canceled i bet 
I bet that's pretty close to accurate, right? Especially in the winter months for us here. Estimate the probability that weather causes a cancellation at least three years in a row in the next four years. Okay, so what they did here is they used a simulation involving 50, 50 randomly generated four-digit numbers to estimate the probability. Okay, so to create the four-digit random um, numbers, you can also use Google Sheets or um, Microsoft uh, Excel if you want. They also have random number generators. And it says, let the digits one through four represent years with a cancellation. Again, because there's a 40% chance. And use the random number table. Yep, okay, to generate numbers. Yep, we got that. The spreadsheet shows the results. Find the numbers of outcomes in which the digits one through four occur at least three times in a row. And that's because we're looking at the last three years and let's look and see they highlighted them here for us well you can see we got one four one that's the digits one through four and three times in a row so the one four and the one are three times in a row again one four two those are digits one through four three in a row uh two four two one through four three in a row and um here we have all of them one three two three that's at least three times in a row, and it's all four of them. So how many times did that occur? Well, it occurred one, two, three, four times. It's nice they've already highlighted them for us. Um, out of a total of, uh, there was 50 spins. So that would be the same as um, eight hundredths, if I just multiply by two on top and bottom, which is 8%. So there's an eight uh, percent chance for the experimental probability that we found um, that the weather causes a cancellation at least three years in a row in the next four years. Okay. Alrighty. So really a lot of this section is being able to look at um, simulations or randomly generated tables and, and find out the probabilities, the experimental probabilities be able to a little bit design your own simulation. Um, this is probably the first time you've ever seen anything like this. And again, the reason is because we want to be able to study situations that we can't or that are impractical to create in real life. All right, that does it for simulations in 7.4. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any more questions. I'll see you guys later.